right there's a temporary box I actually got it from somewhere else and cut a baffle for it to fit mm -hmm. and the all three port walls are different lengths so closest uh, I could get okay. to is about 28 to 32 gotcha. okay. all right all stock on MD8K <laughs> for now temporary have you metered it yet no nah, I haven't At least show the front for the guys, why not? Stock 160. This is a decent size stock. Yeah. Appreciate it. Oh man. Not again. something I want to do. Can I get behind the box? Get yeah, the yeah. subflex while you're playing? Yeah. You want me to play something low? Yeah, yeah play something that you know will get some subflex for these guys. Yeah, yeah. That's appreciated, man. Oh, I'm gonna give him some subflex. Yeah, I'm gonna get in here. You used to have this in yours? Uh, no. No, no, no. He used to have uh, my box in okay. here for 2Z before 15s. saying that thing is playing super low 16 16 hertz dude oh yeah heck yeah you can tell the boxes 
Oh yeah, the box will move a lot from it. Had to get some subflex for you guys back here. Let me hear it. That was fun. Appreciate it, man. Oh, no problem, man. So, I see what you're saying with this port. Yeah, it's all jack. Yeah. He got the box like that. It was originally for... It's originally, when I bought those 12s, they came in this box, and the dude that built it, it was just... He didn't know what he was doing or something. He just made it work. So I made it work. Uh, yeah. I slapped another top on it and cut the holes for it. Okay. I've actually got four of them and mm -hmm. got a box I'm currently working on getting painted and all okay. that one. Awesome. Heck yeah. Thanks for the demo. Oh, no problem, man. Appreciate it, man. What's going on, guys? I'm Jacob Vaughn. do daily cardio videos. Hope you enjoyed the build today. A little bit different uh, may not be the prettiest or loudest for what you expected but at least i got a demo of his build on stock electrical on a pretty big amp got some things to talk about before that i'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys for always watching be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it um if you didn't enjoy it say what was wrong or just like it anyway and comment some good feedback about his build as well as thanks for always watching my daily videos and being subscribers so i'm going to go ahead and start off with the shout out of the day i do one every single day Today's going to go to Chelsea and Whole Shot Inspection M. Said, hey, Jacob, nice video as always. I'm ready for a shout out. Go ahead and check out my setup as well. Walk around and flex video. We'll also meteor it soon at a sound comp. So there you go. Appreciate you watching. Uh, there's your shout out. I went ahead and checked out your channel. Thanks for the demo as well. So stay tuned for, um, I guess, more videos to come. So if you have any questions about cardio in general, feel free to ask as well. So um, thanks for that. Um, so I got a couple things to talk about before I end. First thing is custom box modifications. So in this build, um, this guy, he had to modify his box because of how it was built. I think he said it was built for 12s, but he made it into 15s. So you just add another layer baffle on top of that to make it work. Nothing wrong with that. So one thing you got to consider is you can modify your box, add 45s inside of it. You could maybe put another baffle in, put some bracing in there, and that'll actually help you gain on the meter, or not just on the meter for competition, but in general just for you to sound a little louder or cleaner or play lower, or even for you to be able to play more musically, just depending on what you play in your own build. So little things you can do to make your um, box sound better. Even sealing it off is a really big critical one. Go ahead and check around your box. If you're walled as well, just play some low note, 25, 30 hertz range, half volume, and just see where you can fill around the cracks and edges to see if it's leaking. That's a good thing to look at as well. So I wanted to bring that up. Somebody asked me about it. So second thing, stock electrical on a lot of power. What's the effects? Discuss the results, why it's important. So he had an 8K amp on stock electrical. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's great to get a demo either way and share it with you guys. But keep in mind that usually your electrical should be top one priority or second from top one from your equipment to your electrical after you get your subs and amps and all of that. But consider your, your electrical because you don't want to blow your subs from clipping and distortion and you don't want your amps to get overheated or even run on dirty power and electrical that is not supported be able to support up to part of that because what's happening is you don't want to blow your subs, you don't want to blow your amps, and you don't want a lot of heat to cause things to blow. At the end of the day, it's really just you don't want anything to blow, you don't want to damage anything, and consider that maybe that investment you put into your electrical for batteries, alternator, extra zero gauge wire, do the big three upgrade. All of these things you can do to help support your system and get louder. So you also will get louder with better electrical. So you can have two 12s and you're dropping to like high 11s, low 12s, but you go ahead and add an extra battery in there or go to a high pad alternator, you're instantly going to get louder just because you're holding better voltage. That better voltage supply is going to be cleaner power, less distortion, less clipping, and it can be louder on the meter as well as louder in the all-around system just because you upgrade your electrical. So the end of that, focus on your electrical before you're pretty much set stone with what is my next upgrade. Electrical if your voltage isn't doing so well. The last thing I have before I end is how to set subsonic and what is unloading and it, can you explain that within a bandpass enclosure versus ported. So pretty much subsonic is where it's a cutoff point for your lower frequencies. So if you set your subsonic off, which means pretty much it'll play all the lower notes for whatever the input you bring in it. Pretty much the input is the music. So you normally want to set your subsonic around half an octave below the port tuning. Um, but in a bandpass case scenario, is a little bit different because fourths and sixths are tuned to differ differently. So what I normally do is just go ahead and turn off your subsonic, go ahead and play around two thirds, half to two thirds volume, and play some songs that are lows and find out where it's starting to become sloppy or become a little bit more distorted or sound just a little bit more, I don't know, yeah, just sloppy like I mentioned. It sounds like a little waffle sound. That's where you know you're starting to fall off on. Go ahead and set your subsonic around that point. 
half an octave below tuning isn't going to work unless you're in a more fourth or, or a supported case box case scenario or sixth order case scenario. But for sealed boxes and fourth orders, you're not really going to know that low end response where you need to set your subsonic unless you were to first play it with it off, find out where it's part, starting to become sloppy, and then set it from there. Sorry for this long commentary. A lot of things I've been answering, sometimes for shorter demos, but that's all I got for the day. If you have questions, something I said wrong, I'm not perfect. Be great for you guys to give me some feedback in the comments as well. Till tomorrow. Thank you. Check it all out.